This video will walk through exercise 5a and show how we can decode different portions of a web ID. The decoding of web IDs is not something a client would generally need to do, but can help shed some insight on the web ID structure in general and leads us into the next section where we will generate web IDs. Start by opening exercise 5a from our Python exercises folder. This script makes use of two other packages. The first is PyWeb API client, which is discussed in the previous video, and is a wrapper around some of the functions in the commonly used Python requests library. The second is WebID helper, which contains lookup information for the WebID spec. Its purpose is to translate abbreviations into their full names and present the URL encoded GUIDs in their decoded form. In this exercise and all of the other Python exercises, we will look to the commented sections that say to do for the places where we need to make additions to the code. In this case, we will need to fill out the endpoint for the object that we want to get the web ID for. We'll make a get request and then pick off the web ID from the response. The rest of the script logic is decoding the web ID parts. If we make a request for the element, we can see the console output showing us the web ID is a full web ID, which is what our web API is set to return by default based on the current configuration. We can see the AF server GUID, object GUID, and path. Now let's change our request to return a path only web ID and rerun the script. We see now in the results that the GUIDs are omitted. Again, let's change our web ID type and this time give ID only. Now we can see that the path is omitted and we only have the URL encoded GUIDs. The bonus question asks how we could adapt this script to handle AF attributes as well. Going to the specification, we can see that AF attributes have an extra field to specify whether the attribute belongs to an element or an event frame as well as the GUID for the parent object. So while web IDs are similar for many object types, we do have to handle differences that arise for specific object types.